Well, the cool weather of mid-April 2020 has provided us an extended opportunity to witness the uh, prolific spring wildflowers in the Ohio Valley here. And I've got um, kind of what's left of a red bud fading away in my uh, foreground here. This is on the bluffs of the Ohio River in Hanover, Indiana. We're looking downriver towards Louisville. And this section of the Ohio River between Madison and Louisville is a uh, geological gorge formed by meltwaters, the uh, ice age and rerouting of the Ohio River into this gorge where there used to be just a much smaller stream. Because this is a very young valley here, many of the tributaries in this valley have formed waterfalls dropping precipitously into the Ohio River from the uplands here, which are about 400 feet higher than the river itself. So I'll be exploring some of those tributaries today. This is actually property owned by Hanover College, which is a beautiful little college here in Hanover, Indiana. Here's some of the buildings. And this trail is owned and maintained by the college itself. And there's also some other falls near here that I might have time to explore later on. And this is the, um, you know, the, the younger brother to what's called Clifty Falls State Park, which is uh, about five miles upriver from here, which is very famous and very heavily used. So this is kind of a place to go if you want to break from the crowds. And let's go down here and see if these waterfalls can compare to Clifty Falls, because this is a new hike to me. And let's go see what's down here as far as falls and um, wildflowers. Well, it didn't take long for me to start finding a prolific display of wildflowers on the trail system here at Hanover College. I'll get out that trail map in a minute and give you the location of this uh, grove of Delphinium, common name Larkspur. And Delphinium is a genus name. I don't know the species name of this particular purple Larkspur, except it's very common here in the Ohio Valley. And it's the second wave of wildflowers. This often comes out a couple weeks after the earliest wave of flowers, which is often the uh, Virginia bluebells and the uh, bloodroots. So this hillside is covered with them, and they're very handsome, and usually they'll last a couple weeks. And the way the cool weather is holding on this year, we may get an even longer display. So a cool April has a lot of blessings, especially if you don't like to sweat when you're hiking. It's in the upper 40s today with just enough light rain to give a little bit of... Um, raindrops to these twin leaves. I photo photographed and uh, recorded some twin leaves at my last hike and these leaves have gotten bigger and pretty soon they'll just lay down and be done with their growing for the season but the flower that's only out for a day or two has provided a fruit here. I don't know if that's edible or not I'm going to assume that it's not but it's about the size of an acorn between these uh, twin leaf leaves. So some interesting um, scenery along this trail. What I have done is there's a place to park at Hanover College for visitors right near the trail entrance to what's called the Crow Valley Trail here. And you can see that entrance with the blue trail. And I'm heading down the hill to the um, right side of the map on this blue trail. And it's going to intersect with the trail that leads up to several waterfalls. So that's where I'm at today. And um, this particular grove of Delphinium is right about here. And I'm sure there'll be more to be had, but I thought I'd film these while I had them in my view. And the Ohio River is just down the hill from here with uh, some partial views as you walk down this trail. And let's continue our exploration of the Daryl Carnes Nature Trails here at the Hanover College campus in Jefferson County, Indiana. We're almost to the Horseshoe Falls. The trail that goes to Horseshoe Falls has the orange blaze. And it's a dead end trail, so it's out and back. So let's take some more look at these wildflowers. The Delphinium or Larkspur has been everywhere on this trail. The blue, the red, and the orange trails all have Delphinium by the thousands. And in the mix, we've got some beautiful little white, almost lavender colored violets here. And some uh, wood poppy in the mix too. 
I did a hike last week um, where the wood poppy was extremely, um, it was a lot of it there. And in this case, it's scattered, but not as common. We're not finding any trillium except a few toad shades here. But we'll be on the lookout for those too, but we got a nice, um, a nice variety of wildflowers here, and it's pretty much constant display on these trails in mid-April. We've got some yellow buckeye. Already got its full leaves for the summer. That's one of the first trees to leaf out. If you want to learn more about the native buckeye trees to the area covered by this channel, I'm adding a lot to the uh, Barking Up the Right Tree channel right now as things are coming into bloom. So there'll be lots on there about yellow and Ohio buckeyes. Let's continue up the, up the trail here and let's see if we got some water coming over Horseshoe Falls today. And after we kind of run out of orange blazes to follow here at the Daryl Carnes Natural History Trail Network, um, we do come to Horseshoe Falls. This would not be a trail to do during or half after a heavy rainstorm or right before one is forecast to occur in this area because you do have to walk up the creek bed and these creeks do come up and down quickly. We're getting a light shower today. This is not the type of rain that would cause this creek to come up quickly. Um, I checked my uh, forecast for rainfall amounts before I decided to do this hike. But sometimes the uh, wet rocks make it easier to see fossils and other things. We'll look at that in a few minutes, but in the background of this Horseshoe Falls Basin here, we've got some dogwood in white, some redbud in, in, in purple in bloom. And this is looking down towards where the trail officially ends, but many people do make the trek up to this large bowl-shaped cliff, shaped like a horseshoe. With some water coming over it. This is a very small watershed here. You can hear my echo here. This is just a really neat place to study geology. We've got a cap rock here that is similar to the cap rock I filmed at Anderson Falls a few months ago and um, creates a uh, very solid ledge to form this waterfall. You can see where the water lands. We've got some moss and algae growing on this rock and all kinds of different colors and shades of blue and tan. So we'll do a little more looking at some fossils on the way back out here, folks. This is a real neat place just to study geology. Fairly light rainfall amounts this week so far, so the rain and the water coming over the falls is fairly minimal. I'm sure it could be found with more water fall, with falling, but today is, this is what I have found. It's a very small watershed probably not even more than two or three square mi uh, miles. So we get what we get on these hikes, but this is a fascinating place for water flowers and geology here at the Daryl Carnes Natural History, Tr History Trail Network in Jefferson County, Indiana. And after scrambling back down from Horseshoe Falls, there are some blazes over to the left side of this canyon that I didn't see on my way up, and that is the easier route for future reference. But let's get down to the bedrock here. The lower levels of this cliff here are just full of fossils. And the pieces that are broken off the upper level are not full of fossils. But this lower level is a blue shale with limestone intermixed. Those that live in Southwest Ohio and the greater Dayton, Cincinnati area are very familiar with this rock. This is Ordovician in age the 400 million year old range range and these layers of limestone between this blue shale are just full of fossils i've got hundreds of them just in this small chunk here most of them are about the size of a dime or a quarter most of what i'm seeing right here are brachiopods and a few more over here and rainy days makes it easier to see these shell fragments and looking over here, I've got a horn coral that's about two inches long. Looks like it came off a, you know, a, a bovine animal, but it's not. It's an undersea animal from millions of years ago. And there was another one right over here, a couple of them right here, kind of buried in some fragments of brachiopod shells. 
So what we have here is a fossilized coral reef from millions of years ago. And more of those fragments of brachiopod shells here. So it's an incredible place for geology, fossil hunting, spring wildflowers, and waterfalls. Here's a really large horn coral right there. That one's probably four inches long. Here's one on edge view right here. So it's been cut down the middle. And if you really want to see horn coral fossils, go over to what's called Falls of the Ohio, which is about 30 or 40 miles down the river from here in Clarksville, Indiana. And while I'm here, let's just take one more look at these gorgeous redbud trees. Got some more rocks right downstream here we'll take a further look at, and then we'll move on. One last look at our horn coral here from a different angle. You don't have to fossil hunt in this layer of rock in the mid-Ohio Valley. The fossils are everywhere. And let's just take another quick look at the delphinium that covers the hillside in this entire preserve. Beautiful uh, dark purple color. Let's get back to a few more fossils. And these rocks have all tumbled down this hillside over the years. And what I have right here, we've got that dime there for scale, but we've got more small brachiopods. Again, this water coming out of the sky today, this light rain just makes them more vivid in their appearance. You can see all the little ribbing on them. And this other rock here is a little more of a brown color, but it's got lots of them too, about the size of a dime, even a little smaller. And then this rock here has got what appears to be tree roots, but that is actually what's called the bryozoan, which is an animal that branches out and is upright on the ocean floor, but as they um, fall over and become part of the rock once they are um, deceased. So it would normally be upright, but here it's laying down, but still actually pretty well intact. There's little pieces of it that probably broke off during that time. And also right here, it's a little harder to see, right in the center of the screen there is a coral, which has got a lot of smaller corals that's part of a, co a coral colony. That isn't something I find in southwest Ohio, so we've got some unique rocks here. We don't find these colonial corals in the Ordovician layer that I study at least. There may be some that I haven't found. And I got a little bit more of that colonial coral right here in the foreground as well. So this is a great park for all kinds of outdoor interests. I'm going to keep looking around. And if I find more waterfalls or more points of interest, I will add them to this video series. And as you make your way around the trail system here at Hanover College in Jefferson County, Indiana, there are several more scenic features I'd like to show you. Um, I started at the south end of the campus where there was visitor parking and took the blue trail down into the valley and the red trail upstream to the orange trail which led to Horseshoe Falls. Well, if you continue on the red trail, it switched back its way back up almost to the top of the hill and you intersect what's called the green trail and the tree green trail makes several loops and along one of the loops here is a small waterfall better than that it's a great overhang here for me to eat my lunch on a rainy day without getting wet i don't mind hiking in the light rain but eating my lunch in the light rain isn't as much fun so it's about a 15 foot waterfall here with just enough water to be interesting. Again, these would all be dangerous after heavy rain. So be aware of that when you plan your hikes. These creeks around here come up and down very quickly, especially during thunderstorms. But this is the cap rock that we saw at Horseshoe Falls. And this has made its own horseshoe amphitheater here on a smaller scale. I'm just gonna get the trail map out here. This whole loop could be done in a couple hours. I've been back here longer than that doing some videos. But what we've got here is there's public parking near the um, start of the Blue Trail at the south of the Hanover College campus. Blue Trail comes down on a gradual grade, follows the stream valley up. 
to the Orange Trail here, which goes up to Horseshoe Falls. You can retrace your steps and switch back your way back up to this green loop. And off of the north end of this green loop, there's a spur trail to this waterfall. One could also walk back through the campus to finish the loop and not have to retrace the entire loop if one chose to. So that's what we have here in Jefferson County, Indiana. Some neat little hideaways that are lesser known than the uh, big brother to our north, which is Clifty Falls State Park, which is definitely worth seeing, but many people have already videoed that. So I'm going to leave that unvideoed today and leave that to the people that have already done that.